Tesla's just announced it's producing an all new solar panel in the US. This is really interesting, I'll admit that. This one actually looks really, really good. It's not that uh, usual shiny blue roof panel that uh, sort of looks like a sore thumb, sticks out a lot. These almost blend in. They're more like sleek black roof tiles or something like that than something bolted on top. They're pretty much the, the, most ni the nicest looking solar panels I've seen yet. Production is happening at Tesla's Gigafactory. You, you probably don't even know it exists. It's called, it's in Buffalo in New York and the factory has been very, very quiet for years, but they've owned it and they've done stuff with it. And a lot of people forgot that it existed as well. But the first of these new panels are now scheduled for customers in the first quarter of next year, 2026. So it looks like Tesla's finally reviving its solar ambitions after letting that part of the business kind of drift away for a few years. Hello folks, really glad to have you here with me. My name is Ben Alexander, thank you so much for tuning in. Very, very touched, all these different people joining. And uh, Spiker Speed, thank you very much for joining on YouTube on the legendary tier, the more expensive tier, so uh, really appreciate that. Can you also let me know what, uh, can you send me an email basically, I've made a post about that so that I can add you into the WhatsApp group. What is interesting here is Tesla is bringing back solar manufacturing to the US basically. So the, the company says these new residential panels will be built in Buffalo and will ship from there starting in quarter one, 2026. They're claiming, quote, industry leading aesthetics and shade performance. Shade performance is a very big deal, by the way. No one ever talks about it. And promising long-term reliability with US production and jobs to match, which is really, really nice. I, I bet probably three jobs or something like that to press some buttons and run the machines or something. But shade performance might sound like a small thing, but anyone who's had solar, if you've ever seen how the, the data, the, the amount of power that they're producing is altered when a shade comes over them or something like that, or the moment any sort of cloud happens, uh, it's huge. The difference is wild. So when one section of a roof gets shaded, traditional panels can lose output across the entire array. And you usually need, uh, maybe there's a, there's a couple of things you can do, wire them differently or use micro inverters, which adds complexity and cost and basically more weak parts of the chain, basically things to go wrong. So we don't really want that. Newer tech allows each cell or half the panel to keep generating power, even if part of it is shaded. And that is a very big deal. The way in which you wire them obviously makes a big difference too. Tesla hasn't given full technical details on this yet, so we actually just don't know, probably until halfway through next year, I suppose, and then we'll know some more details about it. But now Tesla's solar history has been really messy. Panasonic actually used to make panels for them in the exact same plant in Buffalo years ago, which is a weird thing, isn't it? And Tesla later switched to rebranded panels from South Korea's Hanwha Q cells, and they look very, very similar as well. The new panels are rated at 410 watts each with a 25 year performance warranty, which lines up with what you'd expect from premium products today. And they might still be using Hanwha's underlying tech, but with Tesla's own design and finishing, they do look slightly different to the current Q sales range, but they could be the same. They may not be, I don't know. You're welcome to put some thoughts in the comments. And yes, you might remember the solar roof tiles as well. The idea was that your entire roof would basically generate power whilst uh, while still looking like regular tiles. That never really would tuck off, but I always thought that was quite exciting and an interesting thing. But it seems Tesla is now pivoting back to conventional panels done properly, stick them on a roof, probably easier to maintain, isn't it really? At the same time, Tesla's relaunching its solar and battery lease program in the US. This is equally as interesting as what I just said there. So in, instead of buying everything outright, home, homeowners can now lease the panels and a Powerwall battery together from what, uh, for what Tesla claims is its lowest monthly costs so far. So the idea is simple, remove the huge upfront expense that puts a lot of people off solar in the first place there's an initial setup fee of 600 US dollars, about 500 pounds or something like that. And after that, you just pay a monthly lease. Tesla's also including a 95% system availability guarantee, meaning the panels and power wall must be working at least 95% of the time or you get credit. 
which is, which is a good thing, isn't it? The lease covers all maintenance, including the inverters and battery pack itself, which are the two main things that usually need servicing or replacement over a 20 to 25 year lifespan. So to me, this I think is a sensible way to grow solar adoption. This will get more solar on roofs quickly. Unfortunately, it's through a subscription scheme, obviously, which is a, becoming a part of the future. There's so many subscriptions in our lives at this point. So. If you don't have to buy the system outright, you don't have to worry about the upkeep. So it is probably one of the subscriptions that is worth paying for, I suppose. It, uh, yeah, it suddenly makes the idea of going solar a lot more approachable because you don't have to pay five or 10,000 pounds or something like that. So, or US dollars, I should say. There's another layer to this too. Tesla is saying, demand for home solar in the US has surged in the past year, partly because of the policy changes and also electricity prices just going wild because more people are buying yachts and that sort of stuff. There is uncertainty about whether the federal 30% solar tax credit will stay in place under the next administration. So a lot of homeowners are rushing to install before the end of 2025. That short-term boost could really, really help Tesla's new panels gain traction in the US. Personally, I think it's a great thing to see them refocusing on energy, not just cars. And it's been easy to forget that Tesla's mission has always been about accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Uh, cars are just a part of that. And to be honest, if we didn't drive cars and rode bikes, that would be better for so many people if you're thinking about climate change and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, Cars are just a part of it, honestly. And I once interviewed Jonathan Shree from Brisbane. He's a Greens councillor and he's, he's a really interesting guy. And he said, said the same thing, you know, cars aren't green. If you want to be green, ride a push bike, don't drive a car. But the fact is a lot of people need to drive cars. They live in rural Utah, stuff like that. You can't ride a bike 20, 30, 40 miles on snow to work. Most people won't do that. It's just not safe. And uh, yeah, solar and battery storage, that is, is a very big chunk of the, the, the puzzle, really. If these new panels are as different and good looking as they claim, and if these le uh, the lease model makes them affordable for more people, if people think that's palatable and, it, and they take it off and they, they purchase this uh, subscription, it could push a lot of houses toward energy independence. And I say that as someone who just wants to see more roofs covered in solar because no matter who makes the panels, it is a very good thing to have more solar and on roofs and more independent electricity production. The more we can power our homes directly from the sun and without having to ship it through cables everywhere and store it locally, the less we rely on gas and coal plants to keep the lights on. So yeah, I think this is a solid move from Tesla. And I've just got one interesting point to make at the end here. This is a fascinating thing. Not because it's flashy, but because it's practical, a proper step forward for home energy. Let me know what you think. I also just want to drop in here. One of my next videos is going to be about Australia literally forcing next year energy companies to literally give you free electricity for two, I think it's three or four hours a day, every day. The weirdest thing, but it's actually happening. So if you're in, say, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, places like that, there's going to be a time next year, midway next year, where you can actually just consume power from the grid and the energy companies are not allowed to charge you for that. There are things to say about that. It sounds good, but is it good? I don't know. That means electric prices are probably going to go up as well, I guess. So let me know what you think. Would you lease solar panels? And would you lease them from Tesla? And uh, also a home battery instead of buying them outright. And do you trust Tesla enough to let them run your household energy system for the next... 25 years. Interesting thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ben Alexander. I really appreciate your time. These are the channel members. These are the real legends. Thank you so much for joining me.